Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks so much for popping in today. I hope today's going well. How are you feeling? I'm much better, thank you. Oh, so good to feel a bit better. I know a few of you have been struggling. These bugs just keep coming back and back. So time to send out a big group hug and then we can all start to feel a bit better. Now today I've got lovely little design for you using some of our new stamps with one of my favourite stamps. As always, look, decorated my envelope just so it matches. Again, all using permanent products, that same Composca pen. So if it gets wet in the post, as these things do, it's been raining here today. So yes, it could get wet. Now this design is using one of our fabulous scenescapes. So if you're one of our new followers, we have scenescapes and you get them in a pack of four and there's lots of different ones. So do check them out on the website. And this one is called Midnight Magic. And I just thought when I saw the new stamps, I'm thinking this is fabulous now little bit of a thing here. It's not cheating. Somebody did message me last time I did a video using a scenescape and they said, Joe, I'm sorry, I think you're cheating. Well, I don't see it as that because at the end of the day, you can buy patterned paper. You don't have to make your own. I mean, sometimes I don't want a fancy background anyway, but also for me, I'm still doing the stamping on this, but it's handy if I need a quick card. And sometimes I do need a quick card. So for me, in my opinion, it's not cheating. Um, but if you think it is and you want to make your own backgrounds, that's fine. You know what we're like here at Lavinia. It takes all sorts. We welcome everybody. And as you know, I do like making my own backgrounds, but I don't always have the time. And I've got to be honest, why would I when Tracy has made this fabulous one for me? So thank you, Tracy. Now... I thought as soon as I saw this, I wanted to use the new Druid's Pass. And it's quite a sizeable stamp. Look, I know you like to know sizes. So it's about five inches across, look. And these are, I think they're six, six inch square. So I put mine on a seven by seven card blank. Now, if you're not sure where your things go, remember about using your acetate as a guide. So I'm going to use VersaFine Claire and I'm going to start with the black, the Nocturne. And I want to stamp the Druid's Pass and I've got to try and keep it straight from one side to the other here. And I'm thinking we'll just have it slightly on the moon there. And again, when you're stamping on these, they do take the ink very well, but it does take slightly longer to dry. And also just make sure you don't slip so obviously always keep one hand on the block and as long as you go down firmly give it a good stamp and then lift straight up you'll get a beautiful image like that look at that and it's like everything it's just getting your head around the best way to stamp so Dana next our lovely fairy or is it Dana well She's obviously got a few nicknames. So someday she's Dana. <laughs> you know what I'm like. Now again, we want it on top of the bridge. So I'm just going to pop my head over. So you may see the top of my hair. So if you do, I apologise. And I'm just going to pop her there. If you're directly over the top, it just means it's easier for you to see. Now, again, you may get a bit of reflection with the light today because these papers are um, slightly shiny. You do get a bit of reflection. So, again, I can apologise. Really, I need one of those fancy studios, don't I? But, sorry, you're in my little craft room with me, with my little daylight bulb. Right, so, look at her. She's just gone beautifully there. If there was a bit of a gap, I would have just made the top of the stones a little bit bigger. So it's not the end of the world. Now, I want some foliage either side. So I decided to go for my English bluebell because I hadn't used it for a while. 
And I'm not going to stamp this in black. I've gone for Fantasia. And you know, I like to tell you the way my head works. Just because we've got blues and purples here, but actually when you stamp it, it will almost look black. Now, a little tip, when you're stamping, if it goes on the dark here, it's fine, but I always worry it smudges. Um, so what I tend to do is I'm going to ink my stamp up, not all the way down. And then what I'm going to do, where I've finished inking, I'm just going to sort of have that at the top and again down and a good solid press and lift up. And just have it at the top here, just so I don't have too much stamping at the base. And I'm just going to have one at this side, just at the edge of the design. Right, we'll do a couple. And again, you see how I've got that orb there? So I re don't really want to stamp over that orb. So we'll stamp this one here. I want a taller one. And I'm just stamping sideways. It's easier for me to, I just find it easy when I'm holding. Just works better in my head. Now I just want, I'm just gonna, I don't want to stamp over that orb. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of paper. Look, I want a third one, just a little one here. There we go. Just because for me, I don't want it too symmetrical. I think if it was, um, for me, I just prefer it. I just think it looks more natural. And you see how I've avoided that. So we'll give that a wipe again, just a damp cloth and then a cloth to dry. I just call mine Inky Binky. It's not a make or anything. It's just my little inky binky inky because it gets inky and binky because it rhymes with inky as you would now we've got some lovely words these lovely arched words and this one says bridge your dreams and make it reality so i need to remember to go back to the black ink for this and it just fits beautifully over this moon And as you know, I love twisting my, sort of bending my words to fit. But with this, I don't have to because it's done ready for us. So again, that's brilliant. Give that a nice straight down and then straight up. And I love that shape and it matches the shape of the bridge look. So you can add as little or as much to these designs as you want. I mean, I think that's certainly building up. But for me, there's a little bit missing at the top. So we'll add a little bit of stamping at the top. And I'm going to come in with this lovely one called the thimble bead. And to start off with, as you know, I love to use two colours. So we'll start off with the warm breeze. Just to give us a bit of depth so it'll almost push it back into the background. And again, I'm being firm. Oh, got some ink on there. We need to get rid of that. And I'm just going to put some at either side first. And again, this is just going to be in the background. So I'm just sort of randomly... And sort of doing odd lengths. I don't want it all to be the same. Just want that nice bit of random. But as you can see, I need to bring some dark colour in now to really frame the whole design. And if you're not sure how these things work, it's useful. So take I would take a picture now. And then when I've added the next bit, take another photograph. And then compare the two and just see. So for me, because we've got some black stamping here in the middle and this lovely dark area here, let's add a little bit of black stamping at the top and you'll see what a difference. I'll just do half just to show you. Ooh, that was close. I had one of those days today where I've been dropping things all day. 
Mind you, I had a bit of a migraine and a bit of double vision, so I think that's probably... But anyway, that could have been a disaster. So if I show you, can you see how we've got half there? And, and to me, that looks more complete, that lovely cohesive design. Whereas here, I think it looks like there's something missing. And I think it's a good way to do that, to take photographs and just see. Now with this, I'm sort of trying to do little groups of two or three because I don't want it to, again, be sort of symmetrical and all the same length and all the same across. I want it to look quite natural. So can you see we've got a group and a gap, a group... And also, I've got darker to either side again. I just think it helps frame it. So we'll give that a wipe before we put it away. Good housekeeping. We like good housekeeping, don't we? Well, I do. I don't know about you. So we'll give that a blot. Just because, as I say, VersaFine Clay, it's a slower drying ink. And especially on this lovely card, it will dry a bit slower. Look, as you can see, we've got some on here, only a little. So what we'll do, I just want to add at the minute, look, our lovely pass or bridge is a bit see-through. So I'm going to come in with my midnight blue, my elements and my number three brush. And what we can do is add, just add some colour, look, to this bridge, just so it's not see-through. And also, if you look, I've stamped the bridge in front of the moon. Now, obviously, we wouldn't be able to see the moon through it. So I need to block that moon out. So I can very quickly look. So can you see there, we've now given the bridge some substance and hopefully blocked out that bit of the moon. And if you can see a little bit, it won't matter because it'll just look like sort of it's shining from behind. So I'm just quickly, and because these lovely number three brushes are so small, you can get right to the end. And I'm actually going straight for my ink pad look because I want such a deep colour. Only because I want it to go over that colour underneath and again I can just look at that I love these for colouring with I almost feel you've got nearly as much control as you have with a pen or a pencil so straight away we've got and, and I can still see the stones just want a little bit more right I'm happy with that now, while I've got this out, I'm just going to add a little bit more colour around the edge. I love this bit here, but let's just frame it at the top a little bit more. So, I'm just going to go in the lid. I'm using a blending tool for this. You can use your brushes if you like. just happens I had a blending tool with this colour on. So, that's the only reason I've gone for a blending tool. Just add a little bit down the side. So you've seen these lovely scenescapes take our permanent inks. So that's our Versafine Clair, but also our dye-based inks. So that's our elements. And as always, I'm inking up on the corners. And then once I've got the corner, then just take the colour right along the top look, just to add... A bit more depth. Can you see across the top there? So we'll give this a spritz. I don't want to spritz on my work, you see, I'm just putting my hand there. And we'll mop that up. So just want to add a couple of finishing tricks now. And as you know, I really favour this glitter, this sparkle yellow Posca. 
and I want to add some to the light into her wings. So I could pump it onto my acrylic block and paint with it. But what I'm going to do is with my Wink of Stella, I'm just going to pick a little bit up block on the end and just add it to her wings here. And then just a little bit on the light there. And then just on the bridge look underneath. And I'm going to start where it would be almost the brightest it would catch it. So that's under where the light is. And then when I've got less on my brush look, we can just add a little bit down here. So it would be a sparkle, but not as much sparkle. And I don't know if you can pick that up. And for me, that just adds. And we can add a little bit round there. Just catching... And then just to add a little bit of something down here, just going to catch on a couple of these lovely grasses. I love the shape of these. Just because I want to draw them in. Now, if you're not a fan of Posca splats, you could just add some highlights on the flowers like that. But I'm going to go full in, get my brush and just round the moon look just for that hint of magic and just under the bridge down here because we've got our lovely orbs so let's add and I'm holding it close so that it doesn't go everywhere and just gentle tapping but the shimmer on that Posca, uh, Pat Posca with the Wink of Stella when it dries is absolutely beautiful. So if I bring in the original, so all I've done is put it straight on my seven by seven card blank. So I didn't even need any card to mat and layer. And these you get four in a pack. So if it was me, I'd buy one pack, get my friend to buy a pack or suggest she needs a pack and then have two out of each, each. Sounds like a plan to me. Or maybe get two packs and swap. Just, just saying, good idea. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. You take care, look after yourselves and I'll see you again soon. Thanks so much for popping in. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.